Hi, I'm Derek Diedrichson. Welcome to yet another edition of Tiny Yellow House in conjunction with Make Magazine. This time around, we bring you a super simple, space-saving, ceiling-situated, single-sleeper, son of a, that's a lot of S's, called the Crunk Bunk. No S's in there. I thought we'd give you a break. <laughs> DQ, you know, when I was a kid, we didn't have these fancy Remo drums. We used to sit in a cave and bang on our skull with some femurs. Now, we didn't have much of a budget for this show this time around, so instead of, you know, getting some background music orchestrated by Van Halen or The Strokes, we figured we'd give you a little hand drum bed. Dedrickson, keep it down! Come on! Jeez. Oh. So welcome to the Crunk Bunk, the interior of. Um, basically, it's a space-efficient bunk bed of sorts, but without the legs. You know, I kind of catered this uh, towards college students, perhaps, or if you live in the city, city dwellers, you have some high-ceiling loft apartments. Those pesky legs and bunk beds and those prefab factory-built lofts always get in the way. So, the Crunk Bunk out of that idea was born, based out of my book, as always, Humble Home Simple Shacks. We built it in our RelaxShacks.com workshop. Uh, suffice to say, my wife wasn't too pleased when she came downstairs and saw this hanging from the ceiling. <laughs> Many fights. But basically, it's a place for me to hide out, to hang out, and work on sketches, uh, creations, designs, and such for my book, a lot of cartooning, that kind of thing. Uh, it's really a place where I can find some peace and quiet, seriously batten down the hatches, get serious, and just get a lot of work done. No, but I actually do get a lot of work done here. I figure if you want to come up with some architecturally bizarre ideas, what better place to do it than in something that's architecturally bizarre? As for the build, it's much like a, a cabin I built uh, for Make Magazine in a video ways back called The Gotta Get Away. Basically, we took that cabin, flipped it upside down, changed the contours of it a little bit, and hung it from ceiling. Couldn't be simpler. Now we added this piece here, made out of plywood for triangulation. When we first built the crunk bunk, we found that it was kind of swaying side to side and not so stable. Uh, you know, maybe some of you are into that, that motion and want that effect, but I didn't want to get seasick. So we built this, drilled a couple holes here for decorative purposes. They also serve as hand holes to get you up into the bed. I'm going to pump you up, one-handed, no-handed. <laughs> As for the windows, dumpstered finds, but of course, at the workshop, we placed the windows in the position we wanted them in against the plywood, traced them out, took a jigsaw, cut out that silhouette, trimmed them in with batten strips on either side, and in this case here, to actually sandwich in the pane of glass, and uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. You can caulk them up any gaps if you want as well. We have the lantern in the back, naturally, and these tiny little windows here, they're actually the covers of IKEA storage containers I found for like three bucks or so. Um, I popped the tabs off, pre-drilled some holes, and it's kind of a window with trim in one. It'd be perfect for building kids' forts, uh, for sheds, that kind of thing, to gain some natural light or artificial. As for the interior decor here, just to explain a little bit of it, behind me, it's actually a painting, and it fit perfectly in here, so I just kind of wedged it in amongst the slats that hold it up. You don't have to use a painting. Plywood would work, corrugated plastic, or leave it open with the exposed slats, much like the ones that support this bed, behind the painting. Um, this here, when I'm working on my artwork and whatever else, it's a trash can, because I'm too lazy to climb out of the bed each time and throw stuff away, so I just throw it through here into a hanging trash can behind. A couple uh, little bowls and glass wine bottles and such have been fitted into the wall. A bulletin board hangs here displaying and kind of holding some of my artwork um, when I'm working on stuff inspirationally or just to, to hold it to get it out of the way or I'll be sitting on it and wrecking it. And uh, over there, painted on recycled freebie wood shingles, Carl Mullen is the guy's name. I'm a fan of his artwork. He's from Western Massachusetts. Uh, just a couple of paintings he did. I just like the whole color scheme of them, just to kind of weird things up. Speaking of weird, it's actually an authentic Dance of the Dead mask. Muggadum, jiggadum, muggadum, goodum. Indy, cover your heart! 
This little shelf here, students in my workshop, uh, came up with this idea. It's like a little half moon horizon shelf, which I like. We cut out this little shape here, free drawn, and just dropped the piece down and supported it with some shelf brackets. And that's it. I love it. Very effective. Side disclaimer, I do understand and realize that my basement's probably the worst spot we could have hung this thing, but for demonstrative sake, it's all we had. Again, you want high ceilings to display the crunk bunk if you want true space efficiency. And that pretty much concludes our tour of the Kronk Bonk Punk. I'm your host, Derek Diedrichson from Make Magazine and Tiny Yellow House. Thanks for joining us, and we will see you perhaps next time. I'd love to stay and chat, but I have some serious uh, creative brainstorming to tend to.